Hello, this is Daniel March, and today I'm going to be doing another another TV episode review. This one's going to be for True Detective Season 1, Episode 4, Who Goes There? Um, so yeah, before I begin on the actual review, though, 10 second spoiler warning, as usual, for those who have yet to actually watch the episode and haven't already, stop the video, go check it out, and then come back here and watch the rest of this review. 10 second spoiler warning, as usual, starting now. Okay, so 10 seconds are up, so for those who have yet to actually watch this episode and haven't already, um, please don't comment down below or be my, um, or be messaging me, then I'll give you a fair warning, because as usual, I did. Uh, so yeah, so yeah, as usual, quick synopsis, Lex and this, Lex and then the rate. So yeah, let's get into this. Um, so yeah, Who Goes There, which is episode 4, season 1, True Detective. Um, so yeah, basically they start off with interrogating this one, this kid, um, Trying to get the, the location of La Douge, or La Douge, whatever. Um, it's a French name, so yeah. Um, they're trying to figure out if the if this guy possibly had some kind of affiliation with, um, with La Douge, which he obviously did, but you know, did he help in the murder of of Lang? You know, what was his uh, association to Lang? And try, basically trying to figure it out. Um, it turns out that they used to date or be married or something like that. Um, and he. And apparently the douche was a was a creepy psychopathic um asshole. Um significantly stronger, extremely strong. And so he really didn't want to so this kid really didn't want to mess with the douche. And he was also like high on meth and stuff. Methamphetamine like half the time. So So yeah. Um basically they explain it the way they explain it is that after the douche served his time in prison, he kind of just disappeared basically. Um, with the only known trace trace of him being the the only real trace of him being that he's possibly being a drug dealer for this one gang, the Iron what was it, Iron Iron Crusaders. And so yeah, and the second day, um the the name Iron Crusaders is heard. Cole, played by McConaughey, immediately recognizes them because he used to be part of the Iron Crusaders. Um, so yeah, so basically, in order to capture the douche, or attempt to capture, capture the douche, uh, McConaughey, he goes back to the Iron Crusaders, and basically, they, they, ba um, basically, they're trying to get some meth, uh, from an opposing, um, gang, um, and yeah, they're just trying to get meth, from, well, it seems like meth and other drugs, drugs and guns from an opposing gang, and they go there, and it just goes to hell, um, it's, it basically turns into a police brutality situation. The police is called in, and it's like blacks versus whites versus the police. Um, so yeah, uh, you, so you have that going on with McConaughey. Um, then you have Hart, um, played by Woody Harrelson. Basically, his wife basically broke up with him, um, ditched him. Basically, um, very rough, uh, very rough divorce. If I have to say so myself, she, um, she basically ditched him in the notes. Um, so he goes to pays her and pays her a visit at the hospital she works at, and she really doesn't want to hear his, hear his excuses, um, you know, the wife or ex-wife, um, you know, and he's getting very aggressive, but McConaughey convinces him to, you know, um, to calm down, you know, it's only for a while, and, and yeah, so now the two detectives are living in the same place, and that's basically it, um, yeah, this this episode was pretty interesting. Interesting. Um, I like the I like the fact that Cole, um, played by McConaughey, he's becoming more human. Um, because you know in the in the show he's like he's like very antisocial or he's just very pessimistic. In here you kind of he gets a bit more development. I mean you always get development from the character, but you get a different side of him. You you sense that he does care a bit for Hart. Um, that he wants to try to be friends with him to some extent. And he's trying to comfort him through his hard times, not the best way, but he is trying to, trying to comfort him through his uh, toughest times. So yeah, he's trying to be there because he's never really been there for anybody. So he's kind of trying to be there for him, and but he doesn't really know how he's doing. But he's just trying to be there for him, which I think is one of the best things of this episode that you kind of see how they're trying to like they're bonding. They're finally they're finally bonding over common grounds because 
Cole, his wife also ditched him after a terrible experience. In his case, his daughter died. Um, here, well, he cheated, but you know, you know, but you know, they both had to. They they basically were ditched, um, divorced very harshly. Um, so he kind of he kind of feels a bit sympathetic towards him. And Cole even goes as far as to try to talk to Maggie, who is the wife. Uh, but uh, that conversation does not go well. Um, he basically, she basically insults um, Cole's parenting skills. You know, saying how can you let your daughter die? And, he, and after she after she said that, first off, she's a total bitch. Um, and second off, Cole must have uh, thought the same thing, cause he because he, he just dead stares her, she, like just dead stares her for like five seconds. Gets up and just walks out, not even saying a word. Um, that was funny and creepy, kind of cool at the same time. Um, so yeah, uh, the the whole action sequence at the end at the end of the show though, where you have the two where where you have gang one gang the you know, where you have the black gang versus the white gang versus the police. That was pretty interesting. Um, you know you, you see my, you also see Michael McConaughey as more of, more of a badass. You know the character his character a bit more of a badass. So yeah, um, Cole, he got a lot of development here from, from a, in aspects that we just didn't really expect. Um, he turned into a bit more of a badass. He turned, I mean, he's always kind of been a badass because, um, he, they try to play this good cop, bad cop aspect and he's always been the bad cop. But here, you know, he's way more of a badass. And uh, you also, he also tries to be a bit sympathetic, tries to be a kind of a friend at the very least. Um, even lets, um, Hart into his apartment to, to sleep. Um, uh, so yeah. I mean, overall, it's a pretty great episode. Um, very, really, uh, it's a Cole-centered episode. So yeah, I mean, Hart, he also has his development with his wife, um, trying to deal with his wife. So that's pretty cool. Um, you, you can see he's struggling. You know, Woody Harrelson, he's an, he's an incredible actor. Uh, you can see his, he's struggling, and the character is struggling through this difficulty. So it's, uh, it's very cool to see that. And yeah, I mean, overall, this is, a, this is an incredible show. And I can and I can't believe it took me this long to actually um watch it. Um, I mean, there's really like no flaws with this episode in my opinion. Maybe one or two things over here and there that I didn't really like. Um, one thing I do like about the the ep the show is that it kind of, it, at at the beginning it kind of started um complicated and very really mysterious and the and you kind of had to rewatch what uh the episode a couple times. And now you it's not really that complicated. It's not mysterious. And really, the only time you have to rewatch you, the only time you have to rewatch the episode is if you want to watch it again. Um, so yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, so I do like how they kind of furthered themselves away because uh, one of the, my early complaints is that is that for the general audience, they're not gonna want to rewatch an episode just to understand it. It's like Inception. It's like Inception. Um, you're not you're not gonna we're not gonna we're gonna rewatch it to understand it more. It's gonna take us some time, and we're not really gonna want to do it at first. Um, so yeah, I mean, I did it at first because I thought it was interesting, but the general audience didn't. So I kind of like the fact that they kind of furthered themselves away from that aspect. I mean, they, it still has its mysterious aspect, but it's not mysterious and complicated at the same time that you need to rewatch it a couple times to understand. It's just mysterious enough to understand that it is mysterious, but it's still a one one viewing type of thing. Um, for the general audience, so yeah, um, yeah, so yeah, I mean, that's not to say that I won't rewatch it, but you know, I'm just trying to binge watch through everything, and if I and I, yeah, binge watch through everything, and if I have to rewatch one episode because I don't understand something, like the whole episode, then that's not, I'm, you know, that kind of takes away a bit of the experience. So yeah, I mean, on a scale of one to ten, one being the worst, ten being the best, and six being decent, um, I'd give it a nine out of ten. It's a pretty great episode. Um, just a few things over here and there that I didn't like, really, really like. And yeah, that's basically it for this review. Subscribe if you don't subscribe. I do movie reviews, TV show reviews, and comic book reviews. So definitely do stay tuned for that. Aside from that, comment down below on your thoughts, thoughts on this episode. Have you seen it? And if not, why not? And if you have what your thoughts on it, comment all that down below. Let me know. Like the video, share on Facebook, Twitter, MySpace, or whatever you guys prefer. And that's basically it for now. This is Daniel Mart signing off.